Hello, welcome. People have been asking, how do you co-op GZ Doom? Um, what's how? Do, what's the process? Um, let's show it. Yeah, we realize it's not the most straightforward process, so we have made a tutorial. Okay, ready? How do you begin? So we take a lot of the things for granted because we just came from when we were children. We'd use DOS, so we knew how to do command prompts. So we're going to show all that. So first of all, how do you open a command prompt in this folder? So here's the folder that you have your GZ Doom in. Uh, we just learned this trick. Actually, I've been using <laughs> Windows for thirty years or something. So click this up. This is a cool trick. So up at the click top, on the address up here. Type folder C shortcut or whatever. Type CMD for command, and then hit enter. It opens the command prompt in this folder. Amazing. <laughs> the other thing you could do is go Window Key R and type CMD, but then you'd have to like change to the folder and all that. Anyways, this is the fastest. All right, so and now we're already in the folder. So here you could type commands. If you type gzdoom.exe, this is the same thing as if you double click the gzdoom.exe in the folder and it runs it and hit enter and it runs it. Um, now we are not loading a wad this way, so it just brings up the selector. Like if you're about to play Doom One or Two or whatever. So then we exit. So now I'll show how to actually launch it with parameters, which are things that specify how you want it to run it without having to run that launcher thing. So type, you can type things after this gzdoom.exe and go dash um, iwad doom2. So this is specifying... So launch doom2 right now if I push enter. Yep, and then do warp. The warp one teleports you into a level. So if you hit enter... That'll launch into level one of Doom 2. Immediately, no delay. Yep. And there's a bunch of other parameters. You can look it up online. There's a whole list of all the parameters that the Doom, that GZ Doom understands. I should say, sometimes it's hard to find all of them. <laughs> We've searched for weird ones, you know, especially networking related. All right, so now show how a batch file works. So what is a batch file? It's the same thing. You, you can do what you were just doing in the command prompt there, but you could do it through a runnable little file. So... In the folder, you can go right click and create. Makes it easier. Go new text document. Just like you're making a text file, but you need to rename it instead of .txt, you need to name it to .bat for batch file. And it says, do you want to change it? Yes. You want to change the extension? Yes. And so when you do that, now you see the icon is no longer a text file. It's got a little gear icon on it. That just means it's runnable. And if you right click it, it has this now open and edit. And this edit thing shows up. When you edit, it just opens the text file with notepad. And you can write in here gzdoom.exe. Same shit as before. Do the whole um, the iWAD and the warp and everything. And you save and the file. Save it. Yep, and you close it, and then when you double click it or you run it, it'll do the exact same thing. So it ran that command that was inside the text file. You can actually put more than one command in the text file. You can put a whole. You can learn all about batch file scripting. That's a whole other video. You can find tutorials online. But that's the basics of it. So, but we have special specific things we put in our batch files for hosting and joining. So let's show that. So you need one. Here's your host file that you normally run. Yep. So there's a bunch of parameters in here. Um, the first two we put are the actual host. So you need to, this is telling your client, your GZ Doom, to wait. So it's waiting for other clients to connect to it. And if you put um, host three or host four, it would need three or four clients to connect before it launches. So when we're playing two player, host two, three player, host three. Um, and then can you show on the uh, other version of it, the um, join version of it right now, actually, so we can see both. So the person joining, they would do gzdoom.exe dash join instead of dash host. So that, and then they need to specify the IP address of the person hosting. Um, if you want to find their IP, but just... The purpose is here. We have put 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. That's not my actual <laughs> real IP. I'm not like the king of the internet with my... Don't hack 1.1.1.1. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you put their IP there. If you want to find their IP, you can go to Google and type, what is my IP? And Google will actually tell you their host, the host's external IP. Um, if you're on a router, you're using a router on your local home network, you're going to need to do port forwarding. But that's like, that's on you for using a router. You need to know how to do your own route. Um, just go look up yeah. a separate guide on port forwarding. If you have issues with people connecting, like if the uh, person is trying to 
join the host and it doesn't work, like the network doesn't actually detect them or whatever. It's probably port forwarding related. You should look up how to do forward ports. Um, that's all I would say about that because it could be a long tangent. Um, but, yes. but basically you specify port 5029 on both of them. That's the default port. You can use actually any port. You can make it like 1337 if you want. Um, it just needs to be the same because that's the one that's going to, the one the host is going to be looking or waiting on and that's the one that the client is going to be trying to join on. So it needs to match. Um, also it needs to match is there's a little mistake here between the two. This is Doom 2 IWAD. This is Doom IWAD. So you'll have to make sure yours match. And oh, then right. also the wads you're loading have to match. Okay, so then so the IWAD specifies which main Doom one wad you which which main Doom wad you want to use. Um, that's going to determine like if you have a double barrel shotgun or not or whatever. But then the custom wads are with this other parameter, the dash file. Um, and you when you do dash file, you specify all the files in a row. You don't have to push put dash file over and over again. So it's like dash file, and you list all of your your wads. So Eve Eternity two. 150 skins. That's like our awesome skins that are in the links. And survival. So glad we found that. It's super good. I've not found anything else like that, by the way. Thanks to Peter Potts. I tried. Remember that was like the first thing Peter Potts did is he's like, you guys need skins. <laughs> we didn't even think about it. It doesn't actually matter. If you have a suggestion for more skin wads, please link. Right. The skins are like not necessary when you're in single player. You never see the other, you never see yourself. So, but in the co-op, skins actually matter. Um, Survival PK7, that's just our survival mod that makes it so you can have a limited number of lives, and if you fail too many times, it actually resets the map for you. That's super a, good. Super Otherwise, good you just end up spawning over and over, and it becomes a shit show. And So WAD files are the original kind of like pack file that id Software made that stands for where's all the data, and that's like what the map files are. And then PK3 and PK7 are like later ver like type of pack files they made for like Quake and stuff said uh quake three or something right yeah i believe so um and they'll, they'll both work with gz doom so you can just list them there um and then the other stuff inside of the host file we have is like dash skill which actually sets its ultra violence um and dash warp 01 so you need to because you need to warp into a level i said that earlier um and then this yep. set dm flags part is like all of your multiplayer settings, when you set them all up, will create these hash numbers, like the DM flags one and DM flags two, and you need to make sure they match. And it's better to just show that. So let's just show that. Um, let me just explain the rest of it though. The save dir, um, that just tells it to make the save folder in the current folder slash save or whatever. You don't need that. And then the plus SV cheats, that's to enable cheats. The host has to do that if you want to be able to use like no clip and stuff like that. Um, and notice, useful sometimes. notice how some of these parameters have like a plus. So it's not dash SV cheats, it's plus SV cheats. And also the set for DM flags is a plus as well. Whoever did that should be punished. <laughs> yeah, why is that different? <laughs> yeah. Changing this. <laughs> yeah, they just want to make it more complicated. All right, so let's actually launch into this. So I'm going to run my uh, host file. I'm going to join. Ready? Yep. So I'm waiting. It says waiting for clients, waiting for players. And now it says, okay, found player, connecting, exchanging game information. And we're there in it there. is. Hi. Damn, you ugly. <laughs> All right, now. Let me change to my screen real quick. <laughs> and I'll show the DM flags thing real quick. So if you go under options. And it's under gameplay options. And it, actually, right when you go under gameplay options, you could already see at the top DM flags right here. Um, but if you change any of these settings, like falling damage off, you'll see the number here is changing. 192, 200. Drop weapon. This DM flag has just changed to two here. Um, basically, these numbers reflect all of the options. So if you ch go around and change all these things, your numbers are going to change up here. And you need to put... Oh, look, this one went negative. DM flags one is now negative. Holy crap. Holy crap. Um, so can you show that on your file actually again real quick? Um, so it's plus set space DM flags and then the number. So there we, I guess you put a negative. <laughs> um, and then plus set DM flags two and then the other number. So you just have to make sure they match. So if you go into the settings and you're changing them all and then 
you later go like, why did all my settings save? That's why, because like this doesn't actually, for the multiplayer, you need to actually specify the DM flags in the in the actual parameter for it to matter. Host specifies, I can do nothing. Yeah, but even if I change these as the host after we've launched in, it won't remember it like the next time we launch. So you have to like make sure you update. That's why you want to save it in the batch file. Very update, good. Update the numbers in your batch file. Yep. And then one last thing I was going to show is um, the uh, change level, change map, I mean. So you can open console by hitting tilde or the back tick next to the one, the one key on your keyboard right above tab. And that opens the console. And then there you can type change map, map 01, or E1M1 if you're doing Doom or whatever. Doom 1, yeah, the episodes. And that's different than single player, so that's why I'm showing that, because it's a different, I think it's just like map or change level or something in single player. And it says for me, only setting controlled by the map, change the map, only setting controllers, that's you. Ah, uh, you controller. can't change it, I see. Yeah, not me. Okay, that's it. That's how you do it. Serious poo-poo. <laughs> how dare you, sir! You <laughs> insult me! Alright, yep. It's a Victorian-era insult. I guess if you have any other questions, all right, I, I don't think we've missed anything, but... Yep, down in the comments.